Today I'm moving on to the Seaside tier list. And this is actually a bit interesting and chirotic because uh, today it was announced that there would be a second addition to Dominion Seaside. It's going to remove eight cards from the set and add nine new ones. So as such, this tier list will be completely useless in just a couple of months. But you know what? This is the last chance for Thunder Dominion to weigh in on first edition. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get us started right away. So, first up, well, let's uh, go right into the D tier, and let me find the card. I so rarely buy it. Now I'm having trouble finding the art. Oh my goodness, where, where is the thing? Navigator, hello. Ah, uh, here it is. Yeah, Navigator. I think it's pretty inarguably <laughs> the worst card in Seaside. Um, yeah, and, you know, you might be thinking it's something else, but in fact, uh, the, the card you're probably thinking of actually does have its uses, and Navigator just generally doesn't, okay? Like, the best thing you can say for it is it combos with Tunnel and uh, maybe Village Green and other cards that <laughs> require the uh, reveal or discard. But the thing about this card is it lets you look at your next hand and uh, potentially dump it. It can also trigger reshuffles that way very frequently. Um, and really what it comes down to is you're just getting two coin out of this and it's terminal action. And there's so many better options uh, on the table, like almost all the time. Silver is almost always going to be better than Navigator. So yeah, like the effect is kind of cool, but just not worth the cost. And yeah, that's kind of the sad story of Navigator. Um, maybe not completely terrible, but it's definitely down here um, in D tier. Uh, I'll say the same for Merchant Ship. Yeah, Merchant Ship is pretty weak overall. Uh, it's just two coin this turn and next. Uh, obviously, the next turn is a little bit better. That's usually how durations are. Yeah, but overall, that's just not very exciting. It's only coin. That's really literally all it gives you is coin. Um, yeah, and there's so many cards that can do better things than that. Like, if you drew a silver every turn, right, that would be the same as playing Merchant Ship pretty much. Like, as long as your deck is capable of drawing that silver every turn. And that's something you got to think about when you invest in Merchant Ship. It's probably best in, like, more sloggy games, uh, like engines that don't draw the whole deck and that kind of thing. But, yeah, just generally, you can skip this card. At five, it's, like, a little overpriced for what it does. Um, well, then I guess you, it couldn't be priced any less, really. Yeah, it's just kind of weak and unexciting. Next in the D tier is good old Pirate Ship. Of course, um... Uh, well known to new players as being like really oppressive in multiplayer, but in single player games, it's almost always a bad idea to get pirate ship. You're just helping your opponent thin out their copper, um, and usually there's some other way they can get money, or they can make a deck that draws a lot and then at start adding in the coins at the end and not even worry about pi what pirate ship is doing. Yeah, there's so many ways to play around it. That said, it's better than the other stuff in D tier because you can build pirate ship decks that work. There's also Capitalism. The event makes pirate ship a whole lot better. Um, and yeah, like any engine that relies on coin is going to be weak against pirate ship on some level. And yeah, like it can be built up uh, to provide you with a lot of economy, especially with Throners and things like that. So yeah, it's not a completely insignificant card, even though it is usually very weak. And that is why it is here in the D tier and not um, below the other cards. Next is going to be Embargo in the D tier. Yeah, a lot of D stuff in Seaside, I think. Yeah, it's a one-shot silver, so it doesn't remain in your deck. But I mean, I don't think that's nearly as good as a lot of people seem to think it is. Uh, putting embargo tokens on things is almost always a bad play because anything you would embargo is going to be something you want unless you've already got it, right? And then you're blocking your opponent from getting it too. That's the dream scenario for embargo, and it very, very rarely happens. Uh, it just very rarely works out that way. Usually, if you opened with embargo, you you need the embargo to afford the important thing that you want. Um, and so, like, your whole plan is foiled when you got to buy it right? Um, and yeah, just in general, though, it's it's unexciting. It's a one shot. It um, It's just a little bit of coin. And yeah, the embargo strategy in general is a little bit uh, uh, ineffectual most of the time. All right, the next card in the D tier here is Pearl Diver. Yeah, Pearl Diver is just something that you so very rarely want. <laughs> the, 
I mean, okay, like you might buy it just because it's a cantrip, kind of. Um, but that's really about the only reason you're getting it. it Maybe to combo with, uh, I don't know, pathfinding or something along those lines. But, you know, typically pro is not doing a whole lot unless there's a card that just very distinctly combos well with it. Um, and I guess, you know, mm, I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to rethink this. Like, I kind of want to put it in C because I just realized Will-O-Wisp makes Pearl Diver a whole lot better. And, you know, Will-O-Wisp is relatively common to be in play. Uh, so maybe that's an argument in Pearl Diver's favor being C. But then I look at the card that's ahead here and I, you know, I'm kind of thinking like, there's no way. Hmm. But you know what? Okay, I'm just going to do it. Yeah, Pearl Diver and C. I think like that combo alone makes Pearl Diver a little bit better since uh, Will-O-Wisp can fish for Pearl Divers and then it's kind of like you're drawing an extra card, sort of. Yeah, and, you know, there's enough combos to make Pearl Diver decent, even though like it doesn't do anything on your turn. And there's the occasional uh, moment when top decking the card matters <laughs> that uh, is relevant for Pearl Diver there. So yeah, I guess it belongs here and... Uh, see, the thing that bothers me is that means, unfortunately, I have would have to put <laughs> treasure map in the C tier. But, you know, I guess I can see it being there as well. Uh, you know, gaining four golds is not nothing, right? And if your engine is already kind of cooking, uh, adding four golds and then being able to draw them uh, is a pretty sweet deal. Like if you're low on payload up to that point. I think this doesn't happen all that often. Um, but, yeah, that that is a way you can make treasure map good enough to be in the C tier. And, you know, of course, there are those games where someone opens Treasure Map Dungeon and then <laughs> gets their golds right away and manages to snowball to victory. I, I think it's pretty infrequent that that happens these days, but, uh, you know, it is plausible. So I guess I got to give uh, old Treasure Map here the benefit of a doubt. It's probably C tier, and I'm just um, undervaluing it. Um, yeah, you know, like, it's okay payload, right? But, yeah, it's um, it's very swingy. And you probably shouldn't be relying on it a lot of the time. All right, then. Next up will be Explorer. Yeah, Explorer gains a silver to your hand, and it gains a gold if you reveal a province. Um, obviously, gold gain is better, but um, I don't know. Like, getting the silver to your hand is not terrible either. Uh, yeah, the big problem with this card is it costs five, and it's competing with all the other five-cost cards. But, you know, it's a decent way to build up economy um, as your engine is moving um, you, you know, once you're ready to start adding those treasures to your deck. And, you know, the nicely it does add it to your hand and it kind of does this gradually, right? So yeah, it can be okay in those scenarios. And the gold gain, of course, can be very good if you've got trash for benefit um, or, you know, any kind of landmark that wants to have gold or you just really need to hit those price points more often. Yeah, I think like the main thing about Explorer is you really want to have a lot of draw in your deck or you want to be in some kind of slog uh, situation where you need lots of treasure to pad out your deck. And yeah, those situations are getting increasingly rare in Dominion. So yeah, Explorer is definitely on the weak side, even if uh, it's not as bad as some people think it is. Uh, next is going to be Treasury. Um, and Treasury, I got to put in the C tier. All right, it's a five coin peddler variant um, that you, know, you can top deck it if you don't buy a victory card that turn. Um, and that's all right. I guess like more and more that's becoming relevant, but really the problem with the card is that it costs five and uh, the effect that it offers is, you know, just kind of mediocre in most games. Um, it's probably the most forgettable card in Dominion <laughs> in some ways. I think like there was like a pull a long time ago, like a Sporkle or something where everyone had to guess every card and Treasury was the least often guessed. It's just so easy to forget it's there because it's so mediocre. Uh, yeah, but you know, it's not the worst card in the world, but I really couldn't give it higher than C tier. Like, sometimes I'll buy it when I hit five just because it's a cantrip, and that's about it. But I think, like, long term, it's often not the way to go in your game. All right, so the next card on our list here is going to be Cut Purse, which I'll also put in the C tier. C is for Cut Purse. Yeah, um, kind of a mediocre card. Gives you a little bit of money. Um it does this attack where it makes them discard a copper. So the cool thing about Cut Purse is that that attack is unbounded, so you can continue playing Cut Purses to make them discard copper, and one of the only pins that's left in the game involves using Masquerade to give someone coppers and emptying their hand. Um, 
that's neat, but it's very rare that you can actually get that to happen. Um, yeah, cut purse, it can be pretty oppressive early in the game, uh, but I think a lot of the time it fizzles out very quickly and it becomes pretty weak. Um, it does let you scout out your opponent's hand, I suppose, if they don't have any coppers. So uh, that can be that can be nice to have, but usually doesn't make a very big impact on the game. And really, that's just the card in a nutshell. It's not very impactful. It's okay. Um, like, like if you just need to do something else besides get money on your turn, yeah, playing a cut purse is all right, but you kind of wish that it wasn't the action you were using your actions on. All right. Uh, next will be Island, which I'm also putting in C tier. I know there's a lot down at the bottom here. It's just how Seaside is. It's very, uh, very uh, bell curvy. Yeah. So yeah, Island, it's okay. Like you get two points um, when you play it. You can tuck away a card for the rest of the game. This is an incredibly slow pseudo trash. Uh, it's not like horrible or anything. I mean, obviously, getting stuff out of your deck that you don't want there is good. But it's just so slow in doing it. Like you got to get this card. You got to have a card you want to put away, and they have to line up, and you got to use an action on the island. Yeah, it's really just not that great. Okay, probably best when you're comboing with cards that gain cheap victory cards, like Groom or Ironworks. But mm, overall, like yeah, not that amazing. It really needs a combo for it to be a strong card, and even then, it's not actually the strong part of that combo. So yeah, mediocre, like at least it gives you some points, so you can't dunk on it too much. Let's jump up to B tier, okay? I'll put Haven in the B tier. Haven's all right. You know, it, for a two cost card, I guess like this isn't so bad. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a card in an action, then you can put a card away for next turn. And this helps you mitigate a uh, collision. It lets you save, let's say a village to kick off your next hand. Or, you, you know, you can just get a victory card out of your shuffle at the end of your shuffle. Um, that's all right. It, it rarely makes a really big impact on the game. But there are some games where I'll use it to make sure that I draw something on my next turn. And, yeah, Haven can be pretty nice for that. It's very cost effective. But I would say it usually doesn't make a very big impact on the game. It's just, like, generally useful, you know? Um, yeah, very average. It's okay. Next up is going to be Tactician which is also in the B tier, I think. Uh, of course, double tactician decks can be really strong, but they're not nearly as good as they used to be because there are just so many more draw options these days. Um, still, uh, yeah, you do have to watch out for that combo when it's in the kingdom because sometimes it might be the only way you can really kick things off. And I don't know, drawing a 10 card hand every turn is pretty good. Now, just single tact, it, it can be good sometimes, like when you're playing a deck that where it's unreliable, like you're not always going to draw all the stuff you need in your hand, well then Tactician will maybe guarantee that you draw things uh, more often. And it, it's pretty all right there. Uh, it helps if you don't mind giving up your hand for some reason. Like, is there alms in the kingdom? Or you have lots of virtual coin or something along those lines. You know, there's a lot of tricky nuance to using Tactician. Um, but I think it's just not nearly as powerful as it used to be. It, it's still pretty good. So next is Smugglers, and, hmm, you know, I'm not completely sure where I want to put it, but, yeah, I guess B tier. We'll stick with B tier for now. Um, yeah, Smugglers, of course, um, if your opponent is gaining good stuff, then Smugglers is great. You can gain that stuff, too. Um, it can create, like, some weird metagamey situations where people avoid buying stuff, but more often than not, they're still going to buy <laughs> good stuff if there's good stuff to get, and you'll be able to steal it that way. So it can be a pretty frustrating card uh, to play against. Um, but yeah, you can get some sweet stuff with it. I think, though, having to rely on your opponent is um, problematic if, if they're not uh, buying what you need or like they find a way to get around you gaining the smuggle cards or you just don't draw smuggler when you need it. So, But still, it's pretty good. Okay, next up in the B tier is going to be Warehouse. Yeah, as far as sifters go... Warehouse is pretty weak. Um, at the time that this came out, it was one of the better sifters because you know there just weren't a lot of them. But you know since then we, we have much better ones. And yeah, Warehouse just is kind of mediocre. Like the fact that it reduces your hand size every time you play it is uh, you know not great. Um, can't really compare to Dungeon, which lets you start off your turn on the duration uh, end of things. 
So yeah, I don't know. It's just an okay card. Like I, I still get it every now and then. It can help you line up stuff early in the game, filter past victory cards late game, but usually doesn't make a big impact in and of itself. So I think it's pretty average. And next is Sea Hag, which will also go in the B tier. Obviously, when Sea Hag is relevant, it can be very, very oppressive and annoying to play with. Um, this was especially true back when Seaside came out. Um, it's, but it's a lot worse now. The fact is, like, there's just a lot more ways to deal with curses. There's more power draw, so you don't care as much about that card on top of your deck being turned into a curse. Um, yeah, and Seasag, Seahag, of course, doesn't do anything for you when you play it, so it's pretty weak in that regard. Like, it doesn't compare very favorably to Witch, um, just for example. Still, like, it can be a fairly effective card. Like, you know, one thing that I find helpful more and more is to get Seahag later in the game and start playing it then. Um, because, yeah, I don't know, like, just not offering any resources is one of the problems with the card, um, but e even if the attack is pretty good. So, yeah, I, I think it ends up being kind of average, below average, maybe. So, yeah, B tier is a good place for it. I could see dropping it down several spots, personally. Uh, next will be Native Village, which I think is one of the worst villages in the game, but, it, you know, it's still nice. It's still a two-coin village. Um, you can build up these big mega turns with it. Um, you can also use it just to pseudo-trash. Like, if you know there's junk on your deck, you can tuck it away and not worry about it for the rest of the game. But that's pretty rare that you're able to do it effectively. Um, yeah, and just in general, like Seaside just, a or, sorry, not Seaside, maybe Seaside, but Native Village is just average. Um, yeah, the, the best thing about it is honestly the cost. Yeah, two coin is pretty sweet. Um, but it's just so awkward. Like to draw a card with it, you need to play two Native Villages and doing that is very effective. What you, very ineffective. What you really want to do is tuck away multiple cards and draw them all back later. So, yeah, and sometimes that's just not feasible. Like, you really need those cards right now. And then Native Village is pretty weak. Uh, so next is Lighthouse, and I suppose it's as good a time as any to jump up to the A tier. Lighthouse remains one of the best defense cards in the game. It's cheap. Uh, it gives you money, um, you know, uh, and you don't have to keep revealing it online. <laughs> that's pretty nice. Uh, it's a little less flexible than mode, but yeah, who cares? It, you're still blocking attacks. Uh, yeah, the, getting the extra money from it, I think, is uh, pretty nice. It's a pretty nice deal. I don't know why that is, but it just sort of works out that that's the thing you need in those uh, those attack-heavy kingdoms that have Lighthouse in them. It's also pretty useful in something like a minion deck or draw-to-X kingdom, since Lighthouse uh, does is disappearing money from your hand. So, yeah, it's a pretty nice card overall, and it fits into most decks pretty cleanly. So I think A tier. Next is going to be Caravan. It's it's basic, but hey, it's a really good draw card. All right, doesn't do much the turn you play it, just a cantrip, but the next turn you draw an extra card at the start of your turn. And yeah, you're never going to be unhappy that you've got Caravans, that's for sure. And they only cost four, so they're pretty good to load up on. And yeah, you know, they're decently strong draw. Usually they're supplemental more than anything, like you want to have other methods of drawing your deck, but, uh, you know, supplemental is still good, especially at the low cost of four. And yeah, Caravan overall is pretty all right. I'm, and more than all right, even. It's good. Next in the A tier is Lookout. Of course, Lookout is a, one of the riskier trashers in the game. Looks at three cards. You trash one, discard one, leave the other. I hate this card, but I can't deny it's pretty effective, okay? Like, you can even open Double Lookout if you've got cheap cards in the kingdom. Um, and it does scout those cards, and it doesn't scout too many, so it doesn't trigger bad reshuffles that often. Yeah, you know, like, and overall, it's just a very flexible card. Now, of course, you have to be careful late in the game with Lookout because you don't want to trash a province or a good card or something like that. And sometimes you just have to eat trashing a bad card and own it. Um, that's just kind of how this card goes, so... Yeah, you got to be careful and maybe stop playing the lookout at some point in the game. Um, yeah, it remains pretty good. Yeah, A tier for sure. Next is going to be Bazaar. Bazaar, well, not much to say about it. It's a very good village. <laughs> it's a village that gives you a coin um, and it costs five. Yeah, this is a very strong card. You're quite happy to buy it for five. That's a very good effect. Um, yeah, I mean, just being able to get some economy while also adding something that makes your deck work is so good. 
It's so good. <laughs> yeah, there's like almost nothing to say about Bazaar at all. Really, why would you? Why would you not want Bazaar? It's so nice. It's so nice. A village with more. Next will be Salvager, which I also think goes in the A tier. Although I kind of disagree with this placement, but you know, whatever. It's fine. Yeah. So it's a it's a um, trash for benefit card. A little bit akin to remodel. You trash a card and you get coin uh, based on the cost of the card, and it also gives you a plus buy. So yeah, this can be used for ending the game. It can be used for clearing out estates early on, um, for trashing stuff you no longer need and getting something out of it. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's weird, like it's different from remodel, right? Like sometimes remodel is a little bit better, but a lot of the time salvager is because you'd rather just have the coin to buy what you want instead of picking a card for a replacement. I guess you could argue like with, with the presence of events, salvagers may be a little bit better since, um, yeah, you can choose to spend that coin on events instead of picking a replacement card. But yeah, overall, like remodel, it's very, very good. Um, yeah, you'll often open with it, but it's also just as good to get mid to late game and use to pick up expensive cards then. So yeah, very strong card there. Next will be Fishing Village. I think it's also A tier. It's also one of the best villages in the game, like Bazaar. It only costs three, and honestly, for three, the effect you get is pretty absurd, right? So, yeah, just coin and uh, actions the turn you play it, but next turn you get two actions, and you also get the coin as well. So, I mean, I don't know. It just it works out. It, it's so good. Now, you do need strong draw to make this amazing, but even if you just have mediocre draw in your deck, Fishing Village is still all right, because at least it gives you some coin to go with it. And at the low cost, it's very easy to load up on them. So it's no surprise that this tends to be bought out <laughs> almost every game that it's in. Yeah, really, really strong card, really cheap card, and it's remained effective all these years. So now we're going to jump up into the S tier. Yeah, and I'm going to put Outpost in the S tier. You know, when this set came out, Outpost wasn't all that special, but I don't know, now that <laughs> you can do so much in a single turn, of Dominion, uh, Alpos has to be up here. It's crazy good. Like you just can't ignore it in most kingdom where, kingdoms where it's there. All right, if you're able to draw enough cards, then I mean it's basically just like another turn. Like the three card penalty, it doesn't even matter hardly, at least in, in a lot of kingdoms. And you know there are ways you can get around it. Like Guide from Adventures will let you flip to a new hand right away. Uh, you know there are other things uh, that it can do as well. So yeah, Alpus, really, really strong. You should never ignore it when it's in the kingdom, I think. Um, you should at least be thinking about getting it. Like it should be a priority. But uh, you know, maybe you determine that it's not worth it, but you should at least be thinking about it when it's there because it's just so important to get that second turn. If you don't have it, like your opponent's gonna like get ahead of you. So next is gonna be Ghost Ship. Of course, like one of the most annoying attacks in the game. And it's an effective attack too. Like you're probably going to have to put back cards that are bad, and then you're going to be seeing them turn after turn after turn if you keep getting hit with Ghost Ship. So it's very, very important to get rid of your bad cards in a Ghost Ship game and play Ghost Ship of your own. Um, it's annoying like how good it is to get lots of Ghost Ships, even though the effect doesn't stack. So yeah, like the this, this card is just super oppressive. I mean, I think like, anyone who's played with it isn't necessarily going to disagree with that. Um, you know, there are counters to it, but who cares? Like, most of the time, it's just really, really effective at what it does, which is slow the game down and, like, control the pace of the game. And, yeah, I think, yeah, Ghost Ship, as long as it's here, yeah, it's not it's not going to win anyone over, so don't put it in someone's first game of Dominion. <laughs> All right, so there are final two cards, are, and I definitely agree these are the top two, our Ambassador and Wharf. And, you know, what you want to put at the top is just going to depend on what you value. Like, my personal choice is Ambassador at the top. However, um, that's not what Thunder Dominion went with. They went with Wharf. And so I guess let's talk about it a little. Um, yeah, of course, Ambassador is a really important card. A lot of the time it's in the kingdom. It's cheap. I mean, and anyone can open with it. Um, it has a big impact on the game um, because uh, it both attacks and thins. Like, it junk attacks and thins which is just incredibly strong. It's, it's incredibly strong and oppressive. Um, and usually back in the day, you would want to get two of these and run like this really, really degenerate deck. Um, but now, 
now that attack isn't nearly as effective as it used to be, there's a lot of cards that can just power through Ambassador for whatever reason. Um, and I think like that's really what it comes down to. That's why Ambassador has dropped to the second position here. It's still an S tier card. It's still very, very relevant. And I mean, if you can build the deck that starts ambassadoring curses, meaning you already have control of the game and you're just adding insult to injury, um, yeah, then ambassador just seems horribly, horribly broken. Plus, it can ship provinces at the end of the game and end it when you're at a lead. Among other things, you can send cards from piles to empty them. I don't know. There's all kinds of little tricks you can do with the card. It's nutto. Okay, but. Wharf is number one, you know, and I, I totally can see it, why it's number one. I mean, Wharf is a card you almost never, ever want to skip uh, because it's power draw <laughs> personified, okay? Two cards this turn, two cards next turn, and starting a turn with two more cards is just dynamite. Plus, it gives you a buy, both turns that it's played. And, like, it just does everything. It does everything you could possibly want, <laughs> to get a deck moving all right it just doesn't have villages that's about it but like if you didn't have villages wharf would be one of the absolute best cards you could get because like at least you'd be having bigger hands every turn right and i mean wharf money probably remains one of the best money strategies there is because of this um, but of course you don't need to play wharf money wharf, wharf is perfectly great in engines as well um, yeah, if you've got more wharves, you're probably winning the game. Like, there's nothing scarier than, like, looking at your opponent's uh, in-play area and seeing they got three or four wharves from last turn. So they're probably going to do some damage. Because in addition to having all that draw, they're also going to have a lot of buys. And they can threaten the end game very easily. Yeah, this, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I feel like the power of this card is obvious, right? Like, the more you play Dominion, just the fact that wharf is insane is... <laughs> Yeah, it just becomes more and more evident that, like, it's amazing this card got printed, and it probably wouldn't be printed in a new set today. So I guess we'll have to see what happens with second edition. Now, I have a little bit of insider info on this, um, but um, I'll say no more there. Um, so I'm not going to speculate on anything. Uh, I'll leave that up to you, who is watching this video and doesn't know about second edition. Maybe you do. All right, um, but you can decide what you think is going to get cut, and I'm not going to talk about it here. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it as much as anyone, because honestly, I haven't played with any of the second edition Seaside cards. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing with those two. But anyway, this is the tier list as it stands now. You know, I said it was a bell curve. I guess it's not really a bell curve, but um, the, the cards at the top in the S tier in Seaside are really, really strong, and the stuff in D is really, really crap. So that's kind of what I meant. <laughs> But at any rate, here we go. There's Seaside. I'm moving on. See you next time.